Hello everyone. So as I am finishing up my and wrapping up my Aikido journey, uh, as I'm planning to, for at least for a while, to stop teaching it, when I was looking at the Aikido and I wanted to reinvent it for my group to make it as good as I can, I looked at all different realms. One of those realms was Ukemi, so the art of rolling and folding. And I created this system for my students which, act, which actually turned out really well. So this is one of those uh, sad moments for me where I'm uh, closing down my dojo, I'm, I'm stopping to teach Aikido, uh, it's a bit of a sad moment for me that this program will not uh, be continued uh, to train as intensively as we did before. So I'm going to share what I discovered in this video, at least some of the, some of the concepts of how I designed the Ukemi practice so that the Aikido students are across the globe. Hopefully you'll benefit and find some answers here. So one of the uh, main issues that I addressed is that when you come into a dojo, is that when you come into a dojo and you start learning uh, to roll, it's a big part of Aikido, you have to, the fact that you have to roll, uh, unfortunately, you have to go straight away into a forward roll. You have to just straight away roll, at least in a lot of, in, in some of the dojos that I visited, that was the, that was the way that people would be taught to do ukemi, which is a bit crazy because it's a complicated movement, it's dangerous, a person can hurt himself as he's doing it and that injury can prevent him from training further, which happened even in my dojo in the very beginning, uh, unless the tatamis have some extra base which makes it more kind of spongy. So if you do a wrong movement that it will be compensated by the mat, but most dojos will have either this type of mat without no extra base or the puzzle mats, which are even more harder. So to address that question, I came up with the system of breaking down all of the ukemi that I know. So I made it into 110 different exercises, uh, which go step by step from the most simple exercise that I'm going to introduce to you in this video to the most difficult practices that I'm able to do, like the solo, hop, uh, solo high fall from the spot and uh, the feather fall. So everything that I'm able to do, but not just, okay, this day I'm just gonna teach you a high fall just straight away out of nowhere. But uh, the question which was asked, so how do I take each, uh, each possible exercise, how do, how do I break it down to the most simple exercises so that doing each one of them building up, eventually you would naturally be able to do the high fall, you would naturally be able to do the, uh, the feather fall and all the other movements. So while I won't be able to introduce to you all 110 movements today, in this short video, I'll introduce you to the basic concept at the beginning, and if you really enjoyed it, then maybe I can film the rest of the exercises. But so let's uh, get down to the exercises. I have this sheet of paper that I um, printed for my students so that they would know exactly which exercise goes uh, after which. And I broke it down to 10 different cues. So, so it's, uh, it's a system where you start you do six basic exercises, then you pass the 10th cue in your kemi, then you go to the 9th cue, 8th cue, and I went it all the way to third dan, to third black belt, which is the moment where if you learned all of that, I have nothing else to teach you in kemi, well, kind of. So I'm gonna start with the 10th cue. So again, when you come to an Aikido dojo, normally you are taught straight away to do a forward roll, uh, a lot of times from this position, which is difficult. If a person is talented, if a person has done some sports before, has done some rolling, okay, he might be able to do it. But uh, a lot of people, they just don't get it. They just can't uh, perform the movement so easily. Uh, so it's not really a good entering point uh, for, this, for this exercise. And what I try to do in this, in this system to create the entering, entry point to Aikido, just to make it so simple that if the least possible talented, if the least talented student comes to your dojo, he would still be able to do the first exercises fairly easily and then progress naturally. So the very first exercise, instead of doing the forward roll, is actually just, first of all, getting the person used to this position of the legs, which is a common position when you do a, uh, either a backward roll uh, or sometimes you end up here uh, after a forward roll. So, so the person is getting used to this position. And now what's very important when you're rolling is a round back. Again, if the person is talented, he will catch it straight away, but let's look at the least talented person. So if I fall straight on my back, obviously that's, and obviously I saved myself here, but if I'm completely flat with my back, it's gonna hurt. And not all people get it, 
that you have to be round. If a person is used to really having a very straight back, a very good posture, it may be difficult for him to catch this. So what I do, the very first exercise is, you grab your leg, you tuck in your, uh, you roll in your shoulders, and I ask the person to roll back and forth. So, so while this may be easy for most people, for, for a number of people, this exercise is already difficult. So, so just to make sure that they have this rounded movement of the back, which is important very much for all the rolls, especially the backward roll. So the person does this roll for a while, then he switches the legs. We're getting him used to being, uh, being able to use both sides. So rolling back and forth. Now, so this is the first exercise. This is what a person does when he enters my dojo for the first time and he wants to learn ukemi. Now, the second exercise that he has to do, uh, we include the hips. The hips are a very important Aikido in techniques in ukemi. So the way you, you use the hips here, instead of holding the knee now, the arms are opened here in the front, which is, again, getting ready for the person to hold that position over the arms. And now, as he rolls back, I ask the person to switch the legs in air. So now, in the beginning, it's just about switching legs, going back and forth. But as the person progresses, I, tr I start to give him other pointers which will be useful for the future of his Akemi learning. So first of all, if you roll on the, on the whole entire back, there's more friction. So that means you need more energy to come up. Uh, so what I suggest and ask the person to do is, if my left leg is forward, I ask the person to roll on the right side of the back. So now there's less friction, the movement becomes more kind of economic. It becomes, uh, you need less energy, it becomes more smooth. So now when you raise the legs, you change, uh, when you raise the legs, you change the side. So you roll back on the other side and you can raise up and you go to the other side. So this makes uh, the movement much more efficient, which will be useful and helpful in the future exercises. Uh, the last thing, which if the person is very experienced and uh, I mean, if the person is very talented, he picks up things, uh, there's one more additional thing I add. Uh, so it's using the hips. So when I roll back, uh, it, you can just change the, the hips here, just like switch the legs and actually the hips don't move. But what works much better is when you, sh when you change your legs, you, you turn the hips and you use the momentum of the turn to bring you down. So again, I go up, I turn the hips and I use that momentum to bring me down. So I'm using the natural energy I generate with the movement, with the rotational movement on my hips uh, to, to make, to give myself more energy, again, which is going to be very useful for the next exercises. So this is the second exercise where the person, where he masters this, where, where he becomes familiar with it, I ask him to do the next one. So the next exercise, the third exercise of the so-called 10th Q of Ukemi is you do the same exercise and now you come up on your foot here. Naturally, I'm getting, uh, the person is getting used to this position, which is a position for the forward roll. It's somewhat a preparation for the Aikido stance. So there's a lot hidden here without the person knowing what he's doing. Uh, also here, the next step is going to, uh, he, he's going to need to go back. So I ask the, the person to extend his arms forward, bring his buttocks down. Again, this is a preparation for a backward roll. So round back and the person goes back, change the legs, change the hips, comes up. So this is a, uh, an easy preparation for the backward roll. This movement here, it's the beginning of a backward roll. The person is getting used to have his foot uh, turned up this way. Also, this, uh, this develops the core strength of the body. Uh, which will, again, which is necessary for good rolling in the future. Uh, some people, as I said, they're not talented, they're not sportive, they haven't done any sports before. This will be a tough exercise for them, but if whenever they are able to do it, they develop uh, some, str uh, some muscular strength, which is going to be beneficial for next exercises. So again, I go back and here I'm learning to use the momentum of, again, of the hips, of the legs to come up myself, uh, to pick myself up that momentum, that usage of momentum, very useful for Kemi. So, so much here already that the person trains without knowing himself. The last thing also uh, here, I'm learning to, uh, to engage the hips. This is a similar exercise to what BGJ people do. So when you come up and uh, they just add this thrusting movement of the, of the hips. Uh, so again, it's, let's say it's a multi-dimensional exercise uh, which if the person, if the Aikido person goes to the BGJ class, this exercise is going to be, uh, is going to be 
this BGG exercise is not going to be difficult to master for them, which is the case for me, by the way. Now the next movement is a uh, step up. So again, when I see the person who's doing this well, I ask him to do the next step. And the next step is uh, I go back and I come up to a stance. So my arms are forward. Notice sometimes I'm bringing my arm back here just because uh, this is my recorder. I'm holding it so it wouldn't fall. You wouldn't have to do this movement. Uh, normally the arms are forward. They help you pick yourself up. Here, what's interesting is when I do this exercise, so if I'll repeat that again, I change the sides each time. And here, I am coming up in straight away into a traditional Aikido stance, into a classical Aikido stance. So the person, without knowing that, is developing not only the ukemi skills, but also the correct stance. Ask him to posture up, to, to have a good balance, so that he's developing balance. And most importantly, so there's actually two important points. So now he needs to bring his uh, foot, back foot here, turn it away, turn it up, which is gonna prep for a backward roll. So when he's gonna learn the backward roll, this is going to be already in his system. So he goes back down and uh, there's a lot of energy here you need to use. So you're learning to pick up that uh, momentum and raise yourself up. And also you're developing a bit cardio. So you're developing a bit of cardio, a bit of uh, muscular strength, so much good things, which uh, the more you develop that initially in the beginning, the easier the rest of your Kimi journey will be. So these exercises you can also apply to a warm up, and uh, you, can, you can use them to um, uh, to warm up your students uh, or just prepare them for, for chemi practice. Uh, but in, in our system, the system that I was developing, that I was working on, these four exercises are the first ones that you have to learn before you continue on to other chemi exercises. Now the fifth one, there's the fifth one and the sixth one are the only ones left in this first set of exercises, what I call the 10th view of a chemi. This exercise you could easily skip. It depends on the person, whether the person needs this exercise or not. In the end, I was thinking about removing this one because this step doesn't seem like exactly necessary for the person, but just so you, I would introduce you to the thought process that I had when I was developing the system. Uh, so you, so the, ask the person to go down on the knees, knees wide, and uh, a lot. Some, there's a bunch of people who will be afraid to roll, who will be afraid of that whole rolling over yourself, letting the world turn in your head, uh, in your vision, and uh, and they don't know how to get ready for that. So to make them used to, to make them familiar with rolling through one shoulder, because most people, they roll through both shoulders uh, since high school. Uh, that's how they were taught, which is not the most efficient roll, by the way. So here, uh, I asked them to, to bring their, uh, their shoulder as close as they can to the opposite knee, and they tuck their head in, and I ask them to throw their foot, throw their feet up. So here, you roll, roll, you roll over. So this makes the person familiar with the understanding that uh, he can roll over, that it's safe, that he can do it. He learns kind of the line of the roll, which is important. So again, from this position, uh, so it's, it's, it's not a lot of information. So just the setup is fairly easy. So the person can easily pick it up. Shoulder goes in, head goes in. And this is the, the, this is the scary moment. He has to just throw himself over, which can be the, the issue here, as I said, can be scary for a person. That's why I was doubting if this exercise is, is the best as a fifth one, but it does work. And now the sixth exercise, uh, it's actually a preparation for a soft high fall, but it's a long theme of, and uh, I would have to take a long time to explain to you exactly how it works, maybe in the future, maybe in, in the next episodes. But um, this exercise is, is a great exercise for warming up, also getting used to the, pers uh, the person for, uh, for a forward roll. So from this position, uh, knees are wide apart, uh, one leg goes straight, so if you have a line that helps, you have a straight line, that leg is straight. A lot of times the mistake is the leg is not straight and that shifts the weight of the hips and doesn't help the person roll. So that line is straight. The other leg, you, you bring it all the way back, uh, more or less on the same line. The front shoulder, you place it next to the front knee, head is tucked in. And while the next exercise is using the arm there, but we're not using that yet, so you're just using it as a support here. Uh, I'll show it to you from the other side so you would see what I mean. So here, here, here. So I'm just supporting myself here. And again, I'm 
pushing myself up. I'm learning to navigate with my hips in midair. And I roll over and I come back into this position, which I am already used to from the previous exercises. Not everyone is gonna do it straight away like this, but still. So from the other side, I'm sitting up here, bam, bam, and roll. So this exercise, it doesn't really prepare you for a full-on forward roll. I'm going to introduce to you later of how I introduce people to that in a safe way. Uh, but why this exercise is great, not only it's a preparation for a soft high fall, not only it's great stretching navigational skills for the person when the head is upside down. For a new beginner, it's it's a bit difficult to understand what's where, so he gets to get used, gets used to that. And uh, from here, also the best thing for me is this is pretty much 95% safe, especially if the head is tucked in. Uh, when you're rolling from here, a lot of people are afraid in the beginning and they want to close the distance. And what they do, they bend the arm, they bend the arm and they roll here on the elbow and then fall on the shoulder and they hurt themselves. So here, there's no distance. You, you make sure the student places his shoulder first. He doesn't start here because then he's gonna hit it. But here, if you have the shoulder down, you're safe and all you need to do is just roll forward. Now, just for the last few minutes, while I still have time to record this episode, the next step, and now we're moving on to what I represented as the ninth cue of the Sukemi system. Uh, so basically when the person does all of these exercises, he has to repeat them, uh, show, show them to me that uh, he's able to do it, uh, kind of get, get it into his mind and body. And then I say, okay, congratulations, you passed your 10th cue. Now let's move on to the ninth cue where we are building on whatever he learned before. We're adding new steps to it. So they're already in his system. We can add new information. Rather, again, a, a, um, an issue that I had with Aikido, the way it's often taught, is there's so many details, so many points kind of thrown on, on top of the person from day one. Uh, or as soon as a new technique is introduced, there's no build up step by step. The person has to process a lot, a lot of steps, a lot of information, a lot of details, and it just overwhelms a lot of people. That's maybe one of the reasons why it's harder for, for Kido to get new students, new people, because they're just, uh, the entry point is so difficult uh, and people are overwhelmed, and then you just go and choose something else. So this is one way to, to solve that issue, is to give them, give them a clear, detailed, best of all uh, already filmed so they could look at it at home uh, kind of a setup for whatever they're gonna do so they would know visually what they're gonna do afterwards and they would have all that build up so that easily they could get into the art of Aikido and by learning step by step they would know where they're gonna get so just laying out some ideas of why the system is made so just to finish up the last uh, few minutes uh, here, uh, the next step is you uh, ask the person to reach with his hand over here, trying to touch the tatami with the fingers. Uh, while you could teach the person straight away to do it here without starting from here, uh, the thing is some people, uh, for them, as I said, upside down, they, they get confused about what's where and they don't navigate themselves well and they lose their balance uh, already. And if you ask them to lift that arm, they over-rotate their, their core, their hips, and they fall down. So, so that's, uh, that's not what we want. First of all, I want the person to get used to this and only then the person raises the arm here. So this is a good stretch. This is a good stretching exercise. You can actually stick around here, get used to your balance, uh, kind of balancing your weight. And now why, import, why it's important that you touch the tatami with the fingers as soon as you can. So here you are rolling and I asked the person to touch the tatami as early as they can because as I said, this is a setup for a soft high fall and I'm gonna quickly show to you how and why, although this is a lot of steps ahead. So if I do the forward rolls, uh, which is a very difficult exercise to do it on the spot, uh, Notice that I'm going to reach with the hand very early to touch the mat. So it's the same motion, the same movement. I'm going to roll over, touch the mat as early as I can. And that's the secret of a soft high fall. The earlier and the gentler uh, and the better I'm going to touch the ground, the more swift my movement is going to be. And you develop the skill here. So again, the, the forward roll on the spot is here. 
So if you saw, if you noticed, I'm gonna make that in slow motion as I edit it, so you're watching it right now, I'm sure, as I talk. My hand touches it early. I'm having a complicated situation here. I have the recorder and the microphone, so it's harder to perform the movement for me here. It could be even softer, even, uh, even more uh, fluid. I'm gonna try once more, so let, let me see. So the whole thing, trying to touch it as early as I can. Same motion as I did on the ground, so once more. So again, this was a bit loud comparably, but no pain, I'm all safe. So this movement you develop in this exercise. So then in the rest of the 110 exercises, there's a whole bunch of steps where, there's a whole bunch of steps where uh, this is progressively being built up. But you start here by reaching out, trying to touch the mat as early as you can. If you can, you can even, if you're flexible enough, you can open up your shoulder here. So if you want to do this trick, that's the secret. You open up your shoulder here and you place your hand, but still you're placing it with the fingers and then rolling. So, so a good setup for what comes next. And again, the person is developing flexibility, coordination, muscular, muscular strength, which is all necessary for him to uh, perform other movements. So as I have a few more minutes uh, of time to, to, to film, I'm just gonna present to you the, the very last exercise for today, for this episode. It's a bit unfortunate that I didn't have enough time to get to the step of how I introduced the forward roll through the hand, uh, through the full arm in a safe way so that the person, would, I would make sure that the person doesn't hurt himself. I'll talk about that topic as I finish up and I wrap up this episode. So the very last exercise, the eighth exercise, the second exercise of the so-called ninth cue of Ukemi, this is a weird one. So, so it took some time for me to come up with that one. I never saw anyone else doing it, but I'll explain to you the, the whole reason behind this exercise. So the exercise, how it works, I'm gonna first show it to you so I could see what the hell, so you could see what the hell is happening here. So I asked the person to lay down on the ground. I'm just flat out, head goes to one side, and then the, the easier way to do it Again, I'm holding my mobile phone here, so uh, it wouldn't fall. So these are ways to start with one leg and then the other, and you unroll. So I'm gonna give you a few moments to try to figure out why the hell is this exercise one of the first exercises, because it's a bit tough to do it. First needs coordination. And whether you figure it out or not, I'm gonna explain it to you. So one of the frustrations I had with teaching Ukemi to various people, especially people who are less talented, is that uh, the, one of the main points of the backward roll, which I explain and introduce to people later, is that you need to have your head out of the way so that when you roll, you would roll here and you wouldn't hurt your neck. And I would just get so frustrated, so mad, when the person wouldn't get it, and not because they wouldn't get it, but because they would hurt themselves. So as they roll back, and if they don't turn the head enough, they roll on their neck, I'm show it through the side. They put a lot of energy, they throw themselves, and they crank their neck here, which is painful. It can, they can get hurt, they can get injured. I just hate when that happens. So to make sure that the person wouldn't do that, so he would understand the importance of going over the shoulder, that's why this exercise is here. And it's a difficult one, but if you can do that, later on the, the backward roll becomes natural. That's out of the way. So again, ask the person to bring the head to the side. And so there's quite a bit of core strength that the person needs to develop here if he doesn't have it before. And so he's learning to, to understand how the legs and the head work in relationship. So here he's learning to come up over the shoulder to get into a proper posture in a backward also just just so much here uh, and it takes some time for people to get it some people do it naturally others don't but this exercise is a wonderful setup uh, frustrating but wonderful setup for a backward roll if, when the person does this the next steps of the backward roll are just just natural and smooth so uh, we took quite a bit of time to uh, talk about just the first eight exercises out of 110, but I just wanted to introduce to you this, this approach because it is something I haven't seen anywhere myself. This idea came up from my frustrations in teaching where I wanted to make sure that my students would learn as best as they can. And I figured this information may be valuable, this approach to you as well as either instructors or students of Aikido. 
If you're interested in this approach, if you like it, if you want to see more of how it progresses, let me know in the comments. I definitely will uh, uh, be happy to share more. Let me know if you have some questions. And just mainly, if you like it, you want the follow-up, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna definitely read those comments. And if there's enough, we'll uh, film some more episodes. So I'm happy you watched all the way through. Uh, uh, we'll connect up and I'll see you later.